Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday edition of the Kids Learning Club uh, from the blog How We Learn. I haven't been mentioning that lately, um, but those of us that may be watching on YouTube, uh, please make sure to check out our blog How We Learn. We spelt with two E's. Um, learn spelt normally or you can go on our Facebook page and follow us there where you can get these videos live um, Monday to Friday at 10 30 in the morning but those of you that are with us now you know that so welcome <laughs> welcome to our tongue twister Tuesday uh, tongue twister Tuesday we've given it that name because at the end of our video we like to do a fun different activity and for today, we're going to show a tongue, give you a tongue twister for the day. We have actually a lot of really exciting things packed into even our regular material. So I want to dive right in to make sure that we all have enough time uh, to get through everything and that we can enjoy ourselves. Hi, good morning, Mateo. Good evening, Anila. Thank you for letting us know that it is the evening where you are. Um, so... Our riddle yesterday, you guys are getting so good at these. There was a time where we had some crickets. <laughs> there weren't a lot of people responding to the riddles, but we're jumping in now. Yesterday's riddle was guessed during our uh, filming and um, uh, Rita was one of our first to respond. So congratulations, Rita. Uh, here's a reminder of yesterday's riddle. What belongs to you but is used mostly by others. So what belongs to you but is used mostly by others? And that is your name, okay? So your name belongs to you, but you're not usually using your own name, right? When you're speaking. So good job, Rita. Uh, we had, um, I think Anila got it as well. Um, I think Hayden and Sloan and Lennox got it as well. Um, there were a few other people, a lot of people <laughs> For, for typing in at the end. So wonderful job. And forgive me if I, if I didn't mention your name, um, but we know who you are. For today's riddle, I will not forget. Yesterday, I almost forgot. Today's riddle is, what kind of coat can only be put on when wet? What kind of coat can only be put on when wet? Interesting. I think you clever viewers will get this one too. I'll give you a pause to think about it. And we'll dive into our fun fact. So this week and last week, we have been doing some fun facts related to space. Uh, the two weeks prior to that, uh, our fun facts were focused on the human body. So if that's something that you're especially interested in, feel free to go back uh, to some of our older videos, you can just click the videos tab in Facebook, or if you're on YouTube, you just go to past videos. And we have some really fascinating information that we've shared about the human body. But to, uh, this week, we're continuing with space. And I talked about the sun yesterday, but I mentioned that we're going to do a couple planets a day. Uh, now, they are going to be quick bulleted point facts. They're going to be a little bit short, but it's going to help us get to know each of the planets a little bit better. And we're going to start from the planets that are closest to the sun and move our way out. Pardon me, we may have been paused there. We had a little interruption on the phone. Uh, so today we're going to be featuring uh, Mercury, that is the closest, and Venus is the, is the next closest to the sun. So the Mercury, sorry, Mercury has no moons. It is a planet with no moons. Most planets in the solar system, just like Earth, have at least one moon, and some of the planets have more moons. And we're gonna learn about those uh, as we go on. But Mercury has no moons. Mercury also has no rings, no rings around the planet. Maybe uh, if you recall from our intro video, there are a couple planets, um, Saturn being one of them, that have rings around them. And those are actually just uh, collections of rocks or dust that float around the planet because of the planet's gravitational pull, okay? And what our gravity is, or gravitational pull, it's kind of like, if you imagine that there's a really strong magnet 
in the middle of the the ball that is that planet and it's pulling things towards it okay so that's kind of a way of thinking about it we call that gravitational pull okay that's what gives those things their uh, those planets their rings that's what keeps the moon circling around all our planets including the earth but mercury has none of that how interesting no moons going around mercury and no rings so no little uh rocks circling around to form a ring and it's also um uh the closest planet to the sun okay now next one up boop, is venus so venus is about as big as the earth okay so they're comparable in size that's interesting to know um and venus actually rotates in the opposite direction than most of the other planets okay so most of the planets are going this way venus is going the opposite way it rotates the opposite way how interesting um now i'm curious i think i want to go look up why that is hmm something happened long ago that made venus rotate the wrong way uh, or the opposite way and venus is also the second brightest object in the night sky so that means that we would be able to see um venus uh on a clear night with the naked eye so if we look up at the sky and it's and it's a nice clear night and you don't have lights creating kind of what we call light pollution um that would disrupt what you're seeing uh you could see some stars but those aren't the brightest thing the brightest thing is the moon if you see if it's out that day and then you can see venus okay and if you are lucky to have a, a telescope at home or nearby um then you would even be able to see it better okay so i'll recap those facts for you today we're talking briefly about mercury and venus as our fun facts in our space theme mercury has no moons or rings um and it is uh the closest planet to the sun and venus is about as big as the earth it rotates the opposite way of the other planets and it is the second brightest object that we can see from Earth in our night sky. Okay? Really interesting. Tomorrow, we will take a look at the next two planets. Okay? That'll be Mars and Jupiter. All right? So, for today's poem, uh, we like to be a little silly on Tongue Twister Tuesday, as well as on Funny Fridays. Okay? We like to share jokes. So, we like to be a little bit silly. Um, and today, uh, there, that isn't an exception. Okay. No exception. We're going to be a little bit silly. Um, and I'm going to encourage you to use your imagination after we read this poem. So, uh, today's poem is written by one of our favorite poets, Jack Proletsky from the book, Be Glad Your Nose Is On Your Face. There it is. And today's poem is called, I Am Gooboo. Gooboo. I Am Gooboo. I think it's a made up creature. Now I'm not gonna show you the picture that the illustrator drew. I want you to use your imagination to imagine what this made up creature might look like, okay? And then later, we're gonna challenge you to do something similar, okay? Making up your own creature. All right, so I am Gooboo by Jack Proletsky. I am Gooboo, who are you? Can you do what I can do? I can drink the largest lake, make the ground beneath me quake. I can juggle tons of trees or a billion bumblebees, run a hundred thousand miles, wrestle 90 crocodiles. There is no one else like me. I can swim across the sea, even swallow half the sky while I hoist a hippo high. I can dance upon the sun, dive back down when I am done, chew the universe in two. I am Gooboo, who are you? <laughs> what would a creature that does all this possibly look like? Do you wanna take a look at what the illustrator imagined? Okay, so the illustrator in this book is Brandon Dorman, and he probably listened to Jack Proletsky's poem, and then he thought up, this guy. So this is Gooboo, okay? And there he is holding a house, a little house on the tip of his finger. This guy's huge. Okay, that's what he looked like. I wonder what he looked like in your mind. Now, I am going to read it over again, 
And, but this time I want to encourage you to maybe think up, if you made up your own creature, what would that creature be able to do? What crazy things could an imaginary creature do? And it's all up to you. You could decide. It could be really anything. Um, and I'd like to encourage you, if, if you think this up and if you decide to draw pictures um, of a creature you make up, or if you want to write a sentence or two or a story, if you're a little older, about a creature that you make up, um, Jack Proletsky, the poet, uses a lot of uh, numbers in the beginning of this poem and um, words related to numbers, okay? So we'll read it over and you'll see it, but maybe your made up creature likes to eat uh, five trees a day or he can run a hundred kilometers an hour, okay? So we're using numbers and, um, and units of, of measurement if you wanna do that. All right, let's read it again. Use your imagination. Think of what your own made up creature could do. So here goes. I am Gubu. I am Gubu. Who are you? Can you do what I can do? What'll your creature do? I can drink the largest lake. Make the ground beneath me quake. I can juggle tons of trees or a billion bumblebees. Run a hundred thousand miles. Wrestle ninety crocodiles. There is no one else like me. I can swim across the sea, even swallow half the sky while I hoist a hippo high. I can dance upon the sun, dive back down when I am done, chew the universe in two. I am Gubu. Who are you? Okay, so if you want to make up your own creature today, draw a picture of it. Maybe you can tell mom and dad what they do or write a couple words or a sentence to show what they can do. Be a great way to use your imagination. All right, so every day um, we share an activity challenge that comes from the blog, How We Learn. Um, and most of these activity challenges are actually written um, by Miss Sarah, Sarah Noftel, who is the writer of the blog. And um, we always share a link at the end of the comments, okay, for it, if, my ex if you want to, um, Look more into it after I explain it. Today's activity challenge is called flying into letter recognition. What could that mean? So flying into letter recognition is going to require a flying object. Hmm, what better thing to be a flying object than a paper airplane? That's right. So I'm going to explain the activity for you. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make a paper airplane, okay? Look at that, another skill that we're getting on our video today. I'm gonna to show you uh, one way that you can make a paper airplane, and at the end, I will share a link with you that has multiple different fancy models of paper airplanes if you want to make multiples or you wanna try a different design, okay? All right, so flying into letter recognition, what is that activity all about? Uh, basically, uh, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, whoever's at home with you, or maybe an older sibling, can uh, use painter's tape to create some letters on the floor, okay? If you don't have painter's tape, you can write letters on paper, tape them on the floor. Then uh, you have to use your flying object, your paper airplane, shoot it into your letter arena. You're gonna have multiple letters. Maybe it's in a hallway. Maybe it's in the middle of the living room, okay? Fly your paper airplane. Uh, towards the letters, whatever, uh, wherever your paper airplane lands, you either have to identify the letter, say what it is if you're learning your letters, um, maybe you have to come up with a word that starts with that letter, okay? Maybe you fly, you land on B, and you have to think of something that starts with B. Maybe for an extra challenge, you don't have to just come up with anything that starts with B, Maybe it stuck with a theme, right? Maybe you have to think of something you eat that starts with that letter or something outside that starts with that letter, okay? Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, uh, I'm just trying to think if there was something else that we wanted to say about that. 
No, I think I think we're good. So that is that is how you would play that activity, flying into letter recognition. Okay. Remember, if you don't have painter's tape, just uh, write it on a piece of paper. Okay, and tape it to the ground. Now, here's a really important part. I know this is what really everybody wants to know. Well, how on earth do I make a paper airplane? Okay, maybe maybe we're not sure. I needed to review this. Okay, so. Here's what my paper airplane looks like. This is the final model. Uh, forgive me, I did use some scrap paper to do this. That's why it's got some lines. Okay, and let me show you how you can do this step by step. Okay, I will give you a couple seconds. If you do want to grab a piece of paper and start doing that with me right now, um, I'll give you a minute to grab that. Otherwise, you can just watch and rest assured that you will have the instructions at the end of the video. Okay, so once again, good afternoon. Uh, to those that have been uh, started to watch, Hayden Sloan and Lennox, hi. Hi, Emily. Thank you for saying hi. Hello. Okay. All right. So hopefully you've got your paper. We're going to take your paper like this, okay, lengthwise. And then you are going to fold it in half, okay. Do, 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 do. Fold the paper in half like this. Again, you'll have to be patient because I'm using scrap paper. Okay, hope it doesn't distract you. So fold it in half this way. Okay, and then I am going to bring each corner into the middle like this. Okay, so each corner here I'm going to bring to the middle. I'm going to do that now. Okay. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right, maybe I'll use this side so it's not too distracting all the lines that i have okay so have you done that have you brought your two corners into the middle okay so it looks a bit like this now okay and then this part can be a little bit tricky okay you're going to do the same action but with a longer part of your page okay so take this Fold the top edges into the center line, like that, okay, on both sides. All right, let's try that now together. Okay, here's what one side is gonna look like, like this, there we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna do it again to this side. All right, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna fold it down. Are you, are you sticking with me here? starting to slowly look like an airplane okay there we go okay so just to recap if if uh, someone is is struggling here i had my paper like this okay i folded it in the center so that i'd have a center line i brought this in first like that okay and then i folded these in like this all right Again, you will have these steps at the end if I'm going a little bit too quickly. Okay, and now I have this and I'm going to fold my paper airplane in half. I'm just gonna fold it in half. Okay, it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna fold it in half. Okay, now I have something that looks like this or like this. All right, depending how you look at it. Oh, it's coming together. Okay, you can play with this guy all day, even after you're done your letter recognition activity. All right, and now you have to fold the wings down. Now, I remember when I was really little, for some reason, this would really throw me off, okay? When I was little, this is a mistake some of us can make, I just thought that it was enough for me to just fold it to the side. But you want a paper airplane that goes really far and really fast, okay? So it has to be designed really well. Here's how you're gonna do it. This edge needs to uh, line up with your bottom edge here, okay? So don't just fold it a little bit like this. They need to align all the way down, okay? So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so you're going to fold the wings down so that the, the top edge matches with the bottom edge of your body, okay? So it, first it's like this, and then boop, 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 boop. It's now aligned to the bottom edge there, okay? So this, what was my top edge is now aligned to the bottom edge, okay? And I'm gonna do that on both sides. So everything you do with your paper airplane, you're gonna do on both sides, okay? Like 
this. Do, 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 do. And then that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. If you happen to have double-sided tape, if you really want, you can put some tape in the center here so that your paper airplane uh, doesn't separate, okay? But once you've put these two edges down and they're aligned, you're basically done. And then you can just fly it, all right? And it's a lot of fun to play with. You can do every, so many different things with paper airplanes. But today, we're challenging you to do a letter recognition activity uh, where you fly your paper airplane into a letter that you have taped down on the ground and you have to call out uh, the letter that your paper airplane lands on or come up with a word that starts with that letter. Okay, wonderful. Now, if I went a little bit too fast for you there with making the paper airplane, um, we'll share a link with you uh, so that you can follow the steps at, and take your time doing it. All right, wonderful. I'm excited for you. If you make this paper airplane, I wanna see what they look like. All right, our last activity um, is our variable activity from each day, and it's a tongue twister on Tuesdays. And today's tongue twister is going to feature the letter S. S. Now, S is a lovely letter to start learning because big S and little s are the same. They're just smaller, okay? And we get to use one nice, simple stroke all the way down to make our S uh, we don't even really have to lift up our pencil, okay? Um, if you do have lined uh, notebooks, this part of your, uh, of your big S is going to be in that middle section of your lines, and then your little S starts in the middle line, okay? So S makes a S sound, and it can be really tricky in tongue twisters. Can you think of any words at, of things at home that might start with the letter S or an S sound? Hmm, I know, a sink. A sink starts with the letter S and the S sound. Hmm, <gasps> strawberries, oh, my favorite fruit. One of my favorite fruits, strawberries start with the letter S. Hmm, ooh, the season, the season that we're in uh, is spring and that starts with the letter S. And if you're not too lucky right now, you might also have some snow, okay? Snow starts the letter S, even though it's spring. Spring can be a little confusing. Wonderful. So let's do our S tongue twister for today. Okay. It's got a lot of S's. I made sure that you could spot those S's um, by putting them in orange in a different color for you, okay? So... We like to start our tongue twisters nice and slow so we know what we're saying and then we like to speed it up and we'll see if you can continue to say uh, the tongue twister clearly even though you go really really fast okay you want to join me all right let's say really slowly does your sport shop stock short socks with spots hmm Strange, I know, tongue twisters usually are. Does your sport shop stock short socks with spots? What makes this extra tough is we've got some additional letters. Okay, I think I'm ready to start really fast. Are you ready to start really fast? Okay, let's go. Does your sport shop stock short socks with spots? Okay, again. Does your sports shop stock short socks with spots? You think you could go faster? Okay. Does your sports shop stock short socks with spots? Oh, okay. I think I'm doing okay. How about you? Are you still with me? One more time, a little bit faster. Does your sports shop stock short socks with spots? Oh, I think I almost said shocks. Did you say shocks? <laughs> it's very easy to mix these up. Okay, so let's look at it again. Does? your sport shop stock short socks with spots okay now if any of you are practicing some uh practicing your writing in your letters right now i'll type this out in the comments and uh, maybe mom and dad want to write out some of the words 
in this tongue twister or the whole tongue twister, and you can copy it out and practice all of the letters that we have here, including the letter S, which is the famous letter in our tongue twister today. Awesome. Thank you so much for all of you for joining us today at our tongue twister edition of the Kids Learning Club. Um, we would love to see your responses for our riddle. I'll remind you again. What kind of coat can only be put on when wet? What kind of coat can only be put on when wet? If you have the answer, you can type it into the comments. And we'd love to see pictures of your paper airplanes uh, and you taking part in our letter recognition um, challenge for the day. Okay, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Au revoir, à bientôt.